everybody. Welcome to Gumpa TV. Hey guys. Sponsored by Hobbling Japan. We're back and uh, Ryan's going to be working on his uh, Asagawa wrapper today. That I am. And I'm going to talk to you about the experiences I had painting and the mistakes I made. Yeah, and I'm going to take it back to old school like we did in the first few episodes of Gumpa TV. And I'm going to be doing a little tutorial. This time on how to scribe some panel lines. Cool. But, but before we get on to all that, Ryan, is there something you want to show everybody? Yeah, I have something to show you, yeah, all right? Yeah, you do. He, al he always has something he wants to show us. <laughs> oh my. Look at this. That is one big kit. Yeah, I just saw this. I, you sometimes see these trucks on the expressway. I think I you can tell me what the name of these trucks are. This is a deco truck. And why do they do this, Sid? I think uh, probably the biggest reason is because Japan is a very conformist society. Yeah. And everybody's supposed to look and act the same. Yeah. And they take uh, these kind of opportunities to express themselves. And for those truck drivers out there, <laughs> this is how they do it. They get these crazy elaborate paint jobs yeah. and lots of shiny things and stick them on their trucks. You see them coming a mile away. Yeah, it's insane. Yeah. I'm, I'd actually like to build one of these kits one day. Yeah. Check it. This even has rubber tires. Yeah. <laughs> Just and look, uh, look at the size of the siding on this Yeah, thing. look, it's huge. <laughs> Actually, the box interior is pretty cool as well. Yeah. yeah so, well, yeah. Deco, you can see all, uh, all the little lights here. It's 120 scale, so there's lots of parts here. Lots of chrome. Deco lots truck has lots of chrome. Yeah. One day. One day. One day. Yeah. There's so much to build so many times. They're actually kind of scary when you see them on the freeways. Yeah, because, they uh, usually come barreling down on yeah. you and they have their front lights blinking. And the first time I saw them, I thought it was a cop car. <laughs> <laughs> What's this coming up behind me? But, uh, yeah. yeah, it's they're, cool. They're pretty expensive if you think of the amount of yeah. uh, work that goes into just the paint jobs. Yeah. These are just decals, yeah? Yeah, they're just decals. Oh, well, that's cool. Let's stick them on there. One day. Deco truck. Dekai. Well, okay, I'm going to show something that's not quite as big or over the top as that one. But it's not new. as just, big. Yep. Just came in today. Global Tech. It's the cool. T-Rex from Jurassic Park. <laughs> Actually, it's from The Lost World, the sequel to Jurassic Park. We can forget that ever happened. We'll just call it Jurassic Park. <laughs> uh, for those of you who don't know, Global Tech is one of the, the Kyoto line. It's very uh, famous here in Japan. Yeah. Very popular. One of the best and biggest names when it comes to action figures. Absolutely. And they've started branching out into sci-fi, and yeah. they've done an alien, the Predator. Iron Man. Iron Man, and there's a um, War Machine coming out. I think that's on our site now, too. That one looks awesome. Incredibly so, detailed, like yeah. just crazy detail. And they even give you part swapping. Yeah. You can change the feet here so that you can plant them on the base. And uh, all his, uh, his jaw and stuff like that move. You can pose him just like he's in the movie. And these kits are not that expensive, actually, no, considering no. what you get. This, this action yeah. figure. Yeah, action figure. Yeah, yes. for sure. Now, they've done Godzilla and all the Japanese yeah. characters, too. So it's like if, when you were a kid, all those things that were great are like <laughs> even greater now. And you can afford to buy them. You don't have to ask your mom. Fully articulated, there you I go. think, is what they are. Okay, Ryan. Time for some Hasegawa Sun Raptor love. Time for Hasegawa. Yep. So did you get this effect by using that uh, Weathering Master yeah, kit? Yeah, absolutely. I used the Tamiya Weathering Master, which is kind of like a rust set. Yeah. Like you have all your metallics, you even have a bit of rust, if it opens. And uh, yeah, I had great fun. Um, it actually, and it worked exactly how I would have liked it to work. It actually brought out the detail in the kit. Yeah. You can see it best here in the, in the weapons bay here, is it just brought out all the lines and the detail. And uh, you can see the difference between, I also put a fat coat on this, but I didn't apply anything to these uh, mm. pink things here. And uh, they're yeah. still very bright. Incredibly bright. Yeah, well, the dollar so, looks a little better, that's for sure. Yeah, it's, much better. It's an aircraft after all. Yep. And uh, so yeah. I'd just like to mention, actually I tested everything first on this old Gundam kit I had. It actually worked very well, except for one thing. What's that? Is um, because I'm using a, a water-based uh, paint, this Vallejo, mm -hmm. um, when I pr applied this uh, fat coat, mm -hmm. is it an acrylic? That's a lacquer. A lacquer. It actually ate away the paint. Well, that's because you're not supposed to put lacquer over top of oh, acrylic. Okay. That's a big gacha. No. No. Lacquer over acrylic, damn no. it, you can't do it. Acrylic over lacquer is okay. Yeah. But if you're using a, an acrylic paint, your best bet is to get an acrylic top coat. And we have those actually. But sadly, we can't sell them overseas. But um, it's still Vallejo. Yeah, it's also Vallejo. Yeah, it's a, it is a, a acrylic top coat. Yeah, and they come in different. You can get a matte, a satin, gloss, and things like that. Yeah, so I prefer the matte. Please use this when you're working yeah. with that. 
Now I did apply this to the weapons bay, mm -hmm. and then I stuck on the pieces I painted. Well, that's not a problem. And so that worked fine. But for this one, because I kind of painted first, mm -hmm. I don't want to damage this because it did take a bit of time. Yeah. Um, and I used the gunmetal gray, mm -hmm. which is a super. I tried to use the brown, but I don't know. It just wasn't working right. But um, and also I, I painted these on the runner, so it made it much easier. Yeah. That's not, yeah. not a bad idea, especially for uh, parts that will assemble into a unit. Yeah. You can uh, paint them first, cut them off, assemble it, and then just add some paint on afterwards. But no, I was, I was having great fun. And um, I hope by next week I will have a lot more done. I think the cockpit has just taken a lot of time. Well, the cockpit is uh, the biggest step. You have to get all that little stuff together before you can encase it in the two bigger parts. Yeah. So what's left for the cockpit then? Um, just the instrument panels. Now, you mentioned you're going to help me with that. Yeah, so I guess. Decals. We're going to do some decals. Some decals. So Sid will show us how to do that. All right. I never done this before. I know. That's why I'm telling you. Even so the little stupid simple things. Just, no, no, no. Just put it just in as put it is. Just put the whole thing? Yeah. It's okay? And now turn it over. Uh-oh. Already. We're doomed. <laughs> we're doomed. Doomed. This is why people use decal trays, but I don't Sadly. need a decal tray. <laughs> you might, though. Okay, that's fine. Now we play the waiting game. <laughs> How long do we wait for? Uh, I if it's really hot water, I tend to only wait, you know, ten seconds or so. Like I don't really feel the need to wait too long. Now you have to make sure you know where it's going to go. It's going to so go right going in the center in the middle, here. Yeah. Yeah. And this circle part yeah. is supposed to be at the top, so it's actually going to need to turn around. So what you will do? There, I see it's already coming off. You need to get that whole thing out. Whole thing. Don't try to pick it up. Just slide it along. Yeah. That's better. Okay, now you can pick it up. All right. Put it down? No, no, no. Place it as close to where it's supposed to go as possible. Okay, now pull it out. Pull it out. Now we will just move it into where we think it's supposed to go. This is where I... Whoa. Add some water here. Let it move around with the water. Can I see these? Sorry, Ryan. No, no. Normally I use a uh, toothpick, but I didn't have a toothpick with me at the, at the moment. I didn't know we were going to do this all right now. So once you think you have it in position, you can use a Q-tip or tissue, yeah. and you want to dab straight down on it. Okay. To get all the excess water out. Straight down, dab, dab, dab. If you don't get any excess water out, it's, it's not going to adhere completely to the surface. Now I pre-painted this already. Is that okay? Yeah, it should be fine. Okay. It should be fine. You don't want to go too heavy with things like Mark Softer or Mark Setter yeah. because it might affect the paint. Okay. But if, if we're only using water and then at the very end we go after with a little bit of the Mark Setter, we should be okay. So let's try another one while we got this camera focused on us. Let's do the other semi-large one. I like decals. So, it's like then a, you'll have great fun helping me because it's like this a, whole aircraft is decals. It's like a Zen thing. It, you can just you don't have to think about anything. Your mind becomes empty as you just <laughs> your mind becomes empty or was empty. Over and over and over. <laughs> I achieved Mu. Mu Shin. I'm okay. What about you, Ryan? Have you achieved no mind yet? Okay, so slide along the bottom. Okay. okay, now this one goes on the left left side here. So this is your it's your time. What? Time it's your time now. Dude, I have no idea. Pick up pick up the Q tip. Yeah. Oh he switches hands, what are you doing here? You want to pull the sheet away from the decal. So hold the decal with the Q tip. It's okay. Pull the the backing away. I'm trying. Yeah, that's why you have the the tweezers. I'm not used to using tweezers. I can see that. <laughs> okay. Now, if it's not moving too easily, you can add a little bit more water. Okay. Just into that spot there. Okay. Now, put it back on a flat surface. Yeah. And use the edge of your tweezers to move it around. Move it into position. Just get this water out the way. Okay, that, that looks good. Is that about right? Yep. Yeah. Now take your clean 
Q-tip there and dab yeah. that water away. Dab, dab, dab. Yeah. Okay. See, it'll take a little bit to set, but you're good yeah. to go. And you just repeat this process for the remainder. Sweet. Well, yeah. thanks. No problem. Yeah. Now that this is done, on the way to being done, you can complete that cockpit in no time. Yes. Okay. And I can spray a finish over you this. You can spray a top okay. coat, but you should wait for those decals to be sure to set. Okay. Okay, right. cool. Well, thanks for showing me that, Sid. Yeah, no problem. I mean, you're good to go for the, the completion of the cockpit now, but I would advise you to wait a little bit, make sure those decals are set before you start trying to glue things together and get your hands all in there. That's cool. Good. Speaking of getting your hands all in there, it's my turn now. We're going we're gonna to look at some Gundam. Not Gundam. Enough, not enough Gundam on Gumpa TV, people no. say. Well, here we are. And uh, some people have been asking for a while now about panel line scribing. Yeah. And uh, that's what we can show you today. And I've got this uh, little G HG gym here. And I chose this guy because, first of all, he's white. So it's easy to see where you're going to put the markings. Yeah. But also because he's very flat. Absolutely <laughs> flat. He's got <laughs> almost no definition here. He's an HG kit. That's yeah. understandable. Well, we're, we're going to add some definition. And what I've done is I've actually gone ahead and taken my pencil. And I've created little lines okay. for where... I want to scribe in these panel lines. Okay, okay, that's cool. And to actually do the scribing, I really only need two things. All right, so I have my line scriber. There's various kinds of line scribers. Of course, we have Timian, Ulfa, as well as uh, Haskell Tri Tools. And we'll th throw a list on the site for everybody to see. I like this scriber the best because it has this hook and you can pull across what you're working on. And here's the Dymo tape. And uh, this is the piece I'm going to be working on right now. And uh, I've gone ahead and I've penciled in a line. And it started to come off because I've been handling this piece a lot. But because I can see where the line starts and where it ends, it's going to be enough. So my first step is to take this dimo tape and figure out how much I'm going to need. And then just cut off a chunk. And this should be good right here. Just like this. Now, this is probably the trickiest part of the whole thing is to try and get this backing off of Dynamo tape. And uh, I can kind of start it here, and if it gets to be a problem, just come in here with your knife. But please do not cut yourself. A little bit more. Pull this apart. Now, this is uh, clear Dynamo tape. You can get it in various colors. I think the clear is actually a little bit. Uh, good in the way that you can see the line that you're working on but a little bad in the way that uh, you can't see the edge of the dymo tape sometimes and there it is so what i'll do is i will line it up on my piece here along the line that i've created and i'll stick it on there making sure it's as tight as it can go and then i'll just pull this across it now this is pretty small Hopefully it won't move. Normally I would do this with a master grade kit because the pieces are bigger. But, uh, you know, just for the sake of television, we'll just take a small, small piece and go from there. Uh, one thing I want to emphasize is that when you have edges, don't try to start on the edge and pull because it will catch on that edge and then you might pull too hard and it will go off somewhere. Start just inside that edge. And you're not going to be able to see this, but pull it across. Try to go slow and steady. That wasn't a very good line here, but I went around my fingernail. Give it a couple runs, and then you can turn it, turn it back and get that last edge that you missed. And I'll take it, actually I'll just reuse this piece of tape because it's still good. I'll flip this over, find my line here, slap it on there, and I'll repeat the process again. Slow and steady. This is much better, this is nice. Go a few times, depending on how deep you want this line. Flip it over. And when you're done, you pull it off, and look at that straight panel line. That's cool. Yeah, it's almost like, wow. that one's a really good one, actually. That's really good. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> See, I have a 50-50% 50, 50 <laughs> 50, success rate. So that's all right, that's done. And what I would do is I would just continue on Throw this on the next piece. And I've gone ahead and I've, like I said, I've marked off what I want to do on the legs and things like that. So I'll continue on like this and then once it's done, 
we can show everybody the final product. And because we are uh, doing these panel line scribing, I will use a marker and I will uh, do all the panel lines. And it will definitely look a lot different than how it looked before we did all this. So uh, once I've scribed this panel line, uh, it's time to take my marker and bring out that depth there. So make sure it's clean of debris. You can use your hobby knife and go through it again and clean up any little excess that are in there. And get your uh, marker pen. We've showed these on Gump TV and just draw that line. It should go along there really nicely hmm. because you've created that groove. Do you think I can do panel linings on the F22? You can do a panel lining on anything you want. You can scribe anything you want on there. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. So as you can see, if you have a, a good guide, such as a dyno tape and a scriber, it's not too difficult, but like anything, it takes practice. You're not going to yeah. be perfect the first time around. Yeah, you showed us that yeah. you need practice. <laughs> I do need practice. I'm a, I must admit, I'm not very good with panel lines, with scribing, but I got some good results. No, it looks speaking good of first timers, time. how the decals go, Ryan? Perfectly. Thank you, Sid. Yeah. As you saw, I think I got it right the first time. Yeah, you, it's amazing. You did one decal. Yeah, and it was right. Close enough. Yeah. Now, I just got to make an announcement. There is a Hasegawa sale on at the moment. Okay. That kit I have is a Hasegawa kit, yeah. and it is in the sale. So please check it out. What else is in the sale? Uh, there's some Machina Krieger. There's some planes and tanks. Cool. Do they transform? Sadly, <laughs> not. <laughs> I didn't think so. All right. So we're still coming up to episode 50. And we're still time to get your pictures in yeah. the Facebook contest. There will be, we will give you a final date when episode 50 will appear. Yes. We actually, there might be a slight delay. We actually have an Oban holiday, yeah. a summer holiday. So we're going to be off work for five days in a row. Yep. And uh, if we put out the episode before that, it's going to be rushed. Yeah. So we're going to try and get everything out after. So we get the extra special long episodes where we can announce the winners and be prepared to send the prizes immediately. Yep. And thank you for all your Facebook entries. Yeah. They are great. They're great. And send more. Thank you. Okay, we'll see you later. See ya.